Your Excellency, Iraq is aiming for 12 million, okay. million barrels per day by 2017. I'll restart the question. I'm not sure uh, what kind of delay we're dealing with here, but you've mentioned in the past Iraq is aiming for 12 million barrels per day by 2017. Some say that's unrealistic, that the infrastructure, the demand might not even be there. Do you really think you're going to get there and how? Well, Iraq has signed contracts with the largest um, international oil companies. And uh, based on these contracts, the uh, production capacity from the 12 fields should reach 12 million barrels per day by uh, 2017. However, I should uh, uh, point out that that does not mean that Iraq necessarily is going to produce that much. Uh, Iraq's um, strategic uh, policy is to maximize its revenues and depending on the demand in the international oil market will be producing as much as the world uh, needs Iraq's extra production. When do you think OPEC would set an Iraq quota and what do you expect it to be? Uh, we have not um, started any discussion um, with OPEC about Iraq's uh, quota. Iraq has been exempted from such a quota and it has, a matter of fact, uh, been deprived of its uh, fair share in the world oil market. And uh, our colleagues uh, at OPEC uh, realize that Iraq uh, has to be compensated for the years that it has not been able to export. And uh, I don't expect that we'll ever start such a discussion within OPEC before we reach uh, 4 million barrels per day. When they do begin those talks, would you argue for 7 to 8 million as your quota as Iraq? I cannot really uh, predict what's going to be the production quota for each country within OPEC because that would depend really how much the world uh, needs oil and how much oil would be available outside OPEC. Based on uh, OPEC's total contribution, uh, the quotas will be decided, but I would not expect uh, that or accept that Iraq's share within OPEC should be less than any other country based on its uh, proven reserves, on its production capacity, and on its uh, needs for economic reconstruction. Do you expect OPEC to raise output quotas when they meet next month? What do you think they should do and what do you think they will do? Uh, well, uh, OPEC has always expressed its readiness to produce as much oil as the world needs. Um, looking at the figures now, I don't see any shortage uh, on the world market and OPEC will be reviewing those figures and I expect there will be a rollover. There is no need really for any new decisions, but OPEC countries always stand ready to increase production if there is a demand, if there are buyers. However, if uh, the demand is where it is now, I don't see any uh, point in uh, increasing their production. You say you don't see a shortfall. Do you see an oversupply in the market right now? Uh, I'm sorry, I could not hear you well. Sure. You said you don't see a shortfall in the market, but do you see an oversupply in the market right now? Uh, not really. I don't think. Um, I think the market is balanced. I think there is uh, sufficient oil on the market as there is a demand for. And um, I think the market is basically uh, balanced. Do you think that oil near $100 a barrel or over is too high? What's the com comfortable range in your mind? Um, the a fair price uh, for both the producers and the consumers, in my view, is, a, is a price where uh, producers in regional um, and marginal uh, fields can produce oil so the world does not need to depend totally on countries of, uh, of OPEC and at the same time uh, it should not be uh, too high to hinder the economic developments. The prices uh, that we hear from the developers 
uh, that will um, allow them to develop new fields mar in marginal areas is about um, 75 to 80 dollars per barrel. Uh, on the other uh, hand, when the price reached about $100 or even $110, we have not really seen any slowdown in the world economic recovery. China is still developing at a very fast rate, so is other regions of the world. So I think the range between the 80 and the 100 has been a kind of uh, a balance that has, uh, that has not uh, influenced the world economic recovery and has also encouraged um, uh, developers to uh, look at possibilities of new fields. As you plan through the end of this year, what do you expect the average oil price to be through the end of 2011? I expect it to um, remain where it is now, uh, around about um, $100 per barrel. Um, this has been the average of the first uh, five months of the year, and I expect it to be in that range. Of course, there will be fluctuations up and down, but I guess the yearly average is going to be about that level. Any expectation on your end on who might represent Libya at the next OPEC meeting? <laughs> well, I think that question has to be posed to the, um, uh, to the council, to the Libyan council. Um, I hear in the media that um, their oil minister, um, Mr. Shukri Ghanem, has left Libya and um, detached himself from the uh, current regime. And um, it will be interesting to see who is going to represent uh, Libya. Most likely nobody. Your federal government transferred $243 million to Kurdistan to pay oil companies for their work, cost recovery. Are there more federal transfers ahead? And will Baghdad pay the remaining 50% that the KRG says it's owed? Uh, no, the agreement uh, with the KRG has been that all the oil that's being produced um, in the region uh, irrespective of their contracts because uh, Iraq still does not consider those contracts as valid or legal or binding to the Iraqi government. But um, any oil that's produced in Iraq, in KRG or elsewhere should be handed to the Ministry of Oil to be exported by SOMO uh, and the uh, revenues collected by the Ministry of Finance, by the federal Minister of Finance. Uh, and this has taken place since uh, beginning of uh, February this year. And um, the Iraqi government have agreed to pay the cost, the capital cost only, based on the invoices that will be presented by the KRG to the Ministry of Oil in Baghdad to make sure that the costs are reasonable, are accurate. And then the Minister of Finance will pay only the capital cost of the equipment that has been installed or the wells that have been drilled on Iraqi territory, as these are all the property of Iraq. And what has happened, Beyond the Minister of Finance has paid, uh, the Minister of Finance has paid the um, amount that you mentioned as um, uh, uh, in, in, uh, in advance, pending the receipt of these invoices to settle these accounts. So um, this is only a payment waiting for these receipts to be reviewed, for these invoices to be reviewed, accepted or, uh, or not, and, and, and then there will be a settlement of the capital cost that has actually been spent on Iraq. So it sounds like you believe that remaining 50% will be paid, but will those companies working in the north eventually see profits and when? Well, I don't know that the question has to be posed to the KRG. As I said, in Baghdad, the, uh, the federal government does not recognize these contracts, and uh, we are not party to it. We have not even received a copy of them. We have not reviewed them. We have not accepted them. And uh, we are not uh, party to any payment to the companies. As I said, the oil is Iraqi oil. It has been received by Iraq, and the payment has been made to the KRG to cover the cost of the capital that has been invested in Iraq uh, pending uh, the review of the invoices to settle the final account 
amount and what has been paid really is just an advance payment till the uh, invoices are reviewed. So cost recovery but no profit payments ahead. Is there a scenario, what would it take for That's you to correct. recognize those contracts in the north? Uh, is there any scenario under which you think you might or your federal government might recognize those regional contracts? Well, we have always told the KRG that they should send their, uh, they should send their contracts to be reviewed, uh, modified if necessary by the Ministry of Oil, and then presented to the uh, federal government to look at it and decide on them. Without the approval of the federal government, no oil contract is in, in Iraq is valid. You're giving oil companies less than $2 per barrel for the oil they extract. I know you see that as an achievement for Iraq, but companies tell us they feel like they're getting short shrift, that at, that's paltry, it holds back investment, especially given the danger of operating in Iraq. Uh, is At those rates, do you think you're going to develop Iraq's oil sector to the extent that you want to? Is it an open for review question on how much these companies are going to get? Well, uh, the bid round uh, for the development of the fields in the south has been a very uh, transparent process. It has been competitive. The bids were received and opened in front of the oil companies and the world and the Iraqi people. And um, uh, this is what uh, the companies has offered. And uh, we have selected the lowest uh, uh, bids. As a matter of fact, uh, the companies are working uh, and the progress is ahead of schedule. Uh, some of them have already managed to increase the production and we are very happy with the progress of work. And I have not heard, quite frankly, from the companies that uh, they regret the fees that they have uh, bid for. On the contrary, what I hear from them is they are happy and um, they are going to compensate uh, their uh, efforts by the volume of the oil that they expect to produce in Iraq. Uh, uh, some of them are telling us they, will, uh, they hope to manage to increase their production even beyond the plateau that they have bid for. And um, I have not heard any um, reservations about the fees that they have bid for. The next major round of bidding in January, 12 blocks up for auction. Which global energy firms do you think are best positioned to take on that work? Well, the next bid round, the fourth bid round uh, for January 2012 is for exploration blocks. Uh, these are not discovered fields. And uh, we have selected uh, the blocks with a very high potential for gas. And our focus is on gas developments. Uh, we are uh, embarked on a very large scale power generation projects in the country and we need more gas for these power generation plants. Also, um, uh, the uh, European Union and our neighboring countries are all asking Iraq for um, gas to be exported to them. So um, that's why we have selected uh, areas of the country where uh, we expect to find uh, large quantities of gas. And I expect the companies that are going to be participating in these bid rounds are the uh, companies with a high gas profile. Such as? I'm sorry? Such as? Any companies you think are particularly well positioned to take on that work? Well, yeah. Um, we go through a pre-qualification um, step and uh, we have already qualified about 45 companies in the f first three bid rounds and these are non, these are the largest IOCs in the world starting with ExxonMobil, BP, Shell, the Chinese PetroChina, uh, Luke Oil, Stat Oil, Eni, Total and so on. But um, for the fourth bid round, we are receiving more uh, uh, requests for qualification, and these have not been decided yet, so I cannot really uh, say which companies are going to be qualified also to bid in the fourth bid round, but at least the ones that have already been qualified, the biggest IOCs, are, uh, are expected to be bidding for these. 
What's the status of negotiations on the hydrocarbons law and revenue sharing? When do you think we could see an agreement reached and passed? Well, the draft of the hydrocarbon law has been in the parliament uh, since uh, February 2007, uh, over four years ago. And uh, I cannot really uh, predict when is it going to be passed uh, in the parliament. However, uh, it is clear to everybody that that draft needs major um, review and um, changes because um, since then Iraq has uh, moved forward. It has signed major contracts for the field developments. The work is going on, progressing very well uh, at these fields and so on. So that uh, law, that draft law uh, needs to be modified. How long will that uh, discussion take in the parliament? Uh, uh, I cannot um, tell. What's the status? Last question. What's Is Iraq lining up a replacement for KMG? How and how soon could they sign a deal? I'm sorry, there was interruption in the line. I could not hear the sure. first part of the, the question. Uh, the, uh, sure. The status of the Akas gas project. Uh, could there be a deal on the table without Kazakhstan's KMG? And when? Which project are you asking me about? The Akas gas project with Kazakhstan's Kazmune gas and, the, yes, and uh, yes, yes. a Korean firm, yes. the status and how soon we could see a deal. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, the uh, gas Munai, the Kazakhstan um, company, has um, informed us that it is withdrawing uh, uh, their participation in the consortium. However, Cogas has assured us that they will go ahead and they are willing to come and sign the contract. And we have invited them. We have accepted that uh, uh, offer. We have invited them to come and sign the contract. And I expect them to come very uh, soon to sign the contract uh, in, in Baghdad. How soon? Um, I, uh, I'm not sure. But um, the last Th I heard, you. I was in Korea with the prime minister. Mm -hmm. The, a, a couple of weeks ago, and they told us they will be coming very shortly. Thank you, sir, so much. It's been wonderful to speak with you.